รยอนฮับไทยคิทเชนวีอาร์เมกิ้งข้าวซอยสวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. Last week we made the curry paste for khao soy. This week we're going to finish up our dish. Now khao soy once again is a curry noodle soup that has crispy egg noodles on top of it. It's super delicious and is iconic of the north of Thailand. But first, let's take a look at our ingredients. Khao soy curry paste, half of the recipe that we made last week. And if you missed that video, I will put the link in the description. One cup of coconut milk, one pound chicken drumettes. You can also use more chicken if you'd like. Two and a half to three cups of water, two and a half tablespoons of soy sauce, two and a half teaspoons of sugar, flat egg noodles, also known as wonton noodles, thin egg noodles for deep frying. This is optional. Some lime, some chopped shallots. Sour pickled mustard greens and some chili flakes. Let's start our soup. We're going to start this out just like you would a regular curry. Okay, so I've got a little bit of oil in the pot, and it's heated. I'm going to add my curry paste, saute it a little bit. I'm going to deglaze it with a little bit of coconut milk. So I've got one cup. So I'm just going to add like I don't know half of it, and we're going to let that dry up. And by the way, this is only half of the recipe that we made. So the other half, make sure you keep it in the freezer, and then you can bring it out for your next batch. So we're drying up the coconut milk, and you're also going to separate the coconut oil again, same as you would normally make a curry. But if that doesn't happen for you, it's not a big deal. But for fresh coconut milk or good 100% coconut milk, the oil should eventually separate, and that's what you're looking for. Oh, it smells really good. There, now my oil really is separating. Now um, I'm going to go in with my chicken, so beautifully lined up, and then I'm going to toss my chicken in the curry paste to get them coated nicely. Now the reason why I'm using chicken wings is because of its high bone to meat ratio. Because once I add my water, the chicken wings can essentially the bones in the chicken wings will turn this into a great chicken stock, which means that if you're gonna use boneless chicken, you gotta use good chicken stock rather than water for this. So I'm going in; it's now well coated. I'm going in with all the rest of my liquid, my coconut milk, and the rest of my water. This is a lot of water. It's way more than you would. When you make a curry, and that's because this is a noodle soup, not a curry. So if you put too much coconut milk and not enough water, it'll be really rich and heavy, and it's just I don't know, it's not as nice. So I mean, if you want it a little richer, you can increase the ratio of coconut milk. I prefer it on the brothy side because just think you're, you know, eating a lot of this stuff, right? So you don't want to make yourself all sick and feel bloated in the end. The soy sauce. I'm leaving. I'm not adding all of it. I'm leaving much of it, half of it, perhaps, for the end. Because right now you want to add enough seasoning so the chicken has something to absorb while it's cooking. But you want to leave enough so that you can adjust it at the end. And we'll let this bring this to a boil, and then turn it down to a simmer, and let the chicken wings braise for about 30 to 20 minutes. 30 to 20, 20 to 30 minutes until the chicken is pretty much fork tender and the the soup has become rich with all that chicken stock. So while the soup is cooking, let's take a look at our noodles. We've got two sets of noodles. One that's going in the soup, and that's this one here. I'm using flat. Egg noodles. It's labeled as wonton noodles, which is what's traditional. Back in the old days, originally this dish used rice noodles, which they dyed yellow and then cut into thin strips, and that's the reason for the name khao soy. Khao means rice, and that's referring to the rice noodles because there's no rice in this dish, as it is today. And then soy means to julienne, and that's referring to the cutting of the rice noodle sheets into strip. But nowadays, people just use these egg noodles. Now you don't have to use the flat wonton noodles. Any egg noodles that you like will do. Now the second set of noodles is optional. 
This is the one that we're going to deep fry into crispy and then we'll top the noodle soup off. You can use the flat ones. You don't have to go and buy extra if you still have that left. But I just want to show you that I like to use this one, the round thin ones, because they fry up more nicely. They look nicer. Also, when you buy these noodles, make sure you don't get pre-cooked egg noodles. It should be you still sh it should be fresh, but you should still have to cook it in water and it'll normally be dusted in flour like this. The one that is pre-cooked don't fry up as nicely. So we're going to take this and we're going to cut them because now they're super long. But don't cut them too short because then they'll look funny and stubbly. Let's go fry them. Oil 350 as per usual and in goes the noodles. Yep, that's what you're looking for. Press it down a little bit. It'll take seconds, so don't go anywhere. And then, after the bubbles have started to subside, just give it a flip. So, you know, you want to be fair on both sides. And then, you know things are crispy when things are still. No more bubbling. And then they're done. So, obviously, it's blown up a lot so do only a little bit at a time don't do too much or you will crowd the pan and there won't be enough oil and just it's just not fun when that happens almost done let's look at condiments Khao soy comes with a set of four condiments. It's very standard. Without the set of condiments, it is not complete. So we've got lime. Khao soy is very rich, so a squeeze of fresh citrusiness <laughs> really helps brighten everything up. So that's actually quite important. And then you've got chopped shallots, which is going to be sort of a crunchy, raw, oniony element. Um, add it if you like it. Some people don't like it because it's a little bit too strong. And then we've got sour pickled mustard greens now this is what they come like whole and then you just chop it up if you cannot find this don't tell anyone but i think sauerkraut might actually be a pretty good substitute it's the same kind of idea you want something that's a little crunchy a little sour that'll mix well with our noodles because our noodles doesn't actually have any vegetables in it so this is it this is your crunchy element okay we're missing one ingredient here and that is our chili flakes Here's our chili flakes and we're going to go and fry them. Just take some dried chili flakes, saute it in some vegetable oils just on medium low heat until it darkens and develops a beautiful smoky flavor. Keep a good eye on it though because it doesn't take long and it burns quite easily. As soon as you can smell the smokiness and the color starts to darken, you're done. Okay, so it has been about 25 minutes. The chicken is fork tender. Now we're just going to taste and adjust our soup. The bigger your pot is, the faster the evaporation. So if you're using a big wide pot, you may need to add water. Mm. So good, but I am going to add the rest of my seasoning. Oh, that's so good. There's nothing like it. The combination of coriander seeds and ginger and turmeric and black cardamom it's just so good it reminds me faintly of certain chinese food which would make sense because that's kind of where this dish came from and then we're pretty much ready to serve so let's boil our noodles so here's our noodles these little noodle strainers are awesome because you don't have to then take the pot and pour it out so i love it rapidly boiling water in it goes and then you just let it sit for these noodles one to two minutes i've never actually timed it but it really doesn't take very long so don't go away and you don't need to salt the water like pasta because the noodles are so thin and the broth is so flavorful that together the salt just becomes moot so you want to if you're using a noodle strainer you want to kind of shake it or loosen it up every once in a while so that the stuff in the middle in case there's a bundle somewhere just to break it up so it gets ex equal exposure. Yeah, that's good. Bloop. All right, let's go plate. And here we are, the moment we're waiting for. I'm so hungry. <laughs> this is smelling way too good. 
So here it is, we're just going to dish it up. Now, as you can see, the broth is not too thick. It's just, it's like a halfway between a broth and, you know, like a cream soup. Because you want it to be easy to eat, not rich and thick and cloying. Ooh. Okay, and then we're going to go in with this thing over here. Ooh, the higher it is, the more beautiful it is. Sort of first rule of thumb for beautiful presentation. And then when you're ready to eat, so super cute, you're going to serve it with this side by side, you know, when you serve it to your guests and it's beautiful. And when you go to eat it, you just add some of this onto here. Add a little bit of shallots, as much as you'd like. Squeeze some lime over it. And I'll mix that up in the end. Some fried chili. So this is what our fried chili looks like now that we've fried it for some extra spice. And then when you're ready, just toss it up and devour it. And that's it. This is actually our first noodle soup on the show. I hope you enjoyed it. A lot of you have requested it. For a full written recipe, you can visit hataikitchen.com. And I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal. Mm.